Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to discuss today, including Earth's magnetic reversal with us being just three days from the movie release on that topic right here on the channel. But let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was very quiet. Coronal holes departing on the south. No sunspots, solar flares, or other eruptive behavior, but we do have a sizable plasma filament. It is cresting into view on the north, that darker rope there. The solar wind had begun a rise in telemetry yesterday, but it was short-lived and is waning back today. Geomagnetic conditions never departed the green. The typhoon has departed coastal China, but not its inundation. Flooding remains atrocious and the recession of the water is proving to be slow and painful. Heavy rains also caused a major landslide in Myanmar. Exact death toll is not known, but the initial number came in overnight at 41. In the forecast, we come to the United States. Around sunset, the upper Midwest is going to light up and we could see tornadoes, major hail, and flash flooding. Now looking a bit further ahead, the second typhoon in the Philippine Sea is heading north. Let's jump ahead three days to the middle of the week and watch its forecast track impacting southern Japan. Eyes open here as the slightest shift in jet streams will send it along the east coast of the country rather than due north across the south. We've got a couple science stories to bring here, but we begin with an aesthetic piece from Hubble. Dancing galaxies with a bridge between them. It is remarkable how defined the bridge is given the supposedly random chaos of gravitational interaction. Seems like it could be a coiling plasma connection to me, with dust. Let's go next to a look at the field-aligned currents around the Earth and those which interact with the ionosphere. It turns out that a considerable excess of electric current runs through the northern hemisphere compared to the south, but only during quiet periods. During space weather impacts, the slight differences disappear under the vastly more influential modulation of the solar wind. The study nails down precipitation patterns, especially over Laos, and has determined that long-term hydroclimatological forcing by the sunspot cycles and their longer harmonics definitely exists. Indian Ocean Precipitation Force 2 When the sun goes to sleep and many ice ages grip the earth, surprisingly, the place many ancestors chose was mountainous, where it was even colder than the rest of the world. This was true in the western U.S., Asia, and Europe too, and the reason is the increased rainfall at high altitude. Side note, this is why the high deserts of the U.S. are favorable if the sun re-enters grand minimum this century. And now our top story. It appears the reliance of scientists on the populace's inability to do basic math knows no bounds. Wisconsin professor studies one of the most complex magnetic sites in the world and determines that the last magnetic reversal took a very long time, 22,000 years, and then suggests that it means even though our field has begun another shift, we have lots of time to prepare as a species. Well, a problem comes with the shorter-term magnetic excursions and with the actual observations. First, here are the last few magnetic excursions in their approximated time range of occurrence. Given the rapid flip action, they are harder to pick out in paleoclimate data, and there is no way of knowing if that Wisconsin professor accidentally marked subsequent excursions as the end of the last great cron reversal. But even if he is right about the long-term one, the timeline suggests we're not only due again for an excursion with a 10 to 12,000 year cycle or so, but we actually know the poles have begun their shift already. NASA said we lost 10% of the field in 2000. ESA upgraded that to 15% in 2010 and also said we had gone from losing 5% per century to 5% per decade. By the way, using those two loss rates, the full reversal period is between 2,000 and 200 years, and we are eking towards the lower range now as it's accelerating. We have been in it over 200 years already, seen accelerations, and the World Magnetic Model has endured an emergency update correction this year, so that 22,000 years number can just be thrown out the window. We're in the red zone already. Over at SuspiciousObservers.org, we had our weekly Members Fly on the Wall podcast post yesterday, solid discussion on critical topics, and we also have a deeper look episode on the record galactic infrared brightness that we reported last week, and what to look for next if it truly is the first sign of a galactic superwave. We greatly appreciate your support. That magnetic reversal full movie is just three days away. Here, we've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.